hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna talk about some recent reads, uh, I, meaning some books I've read that I've not featured in a vlog. So today we have four books. We have four books. Um, let's start with the heart bag because I just like to have it on the bottom of the pile. Anyway, so this is Pretending by Holly Bourne. Now Holly Bourne is one of my go-to authors. She writes a good stuff. Oh yes, she does. So I think at this point in time she's written mostly YA, but she's also written some adult books this being one of them. Both the YA books and the adult books have in common is the mental health aspect, the mental health, the relationships, those kinds of things. There can be a lot of negative triggers in in her books but they're done in such a way that it rather than making you go oh no uh, it kind of makes you more think about the situation and you know go from there enough about that moving on to this book so in this book we have april and april she's she's not having much luck with relationships but then she kind of puts on this like online persona as gretel so she's on the dating app and she meets someone as gretel kind of goes through this whole the only reason this guy likes her so much is because she's Gretel and not herself. But they go closer. They go very close. And she still hasn't like told him the truth. I very much enjoyed this book. <laughs> so Holly Bond is... She does mental health relationship all that very well with a comedic twist on the whole thing. Which, you know, you need... You need some you need some laughter within the like harsher truths of it all. And I mean, how can you not love a book that starts with I hate men? Moving on. Actually, let's continue on with the adult romance kind of deal. So this is All I Ever Wanted by Lucy Dillon. Lucy Dillon. Why do I put on weird accents? Why? So in this one we have a few different perspectives of the whole situation. So we have Caitlin and she is married to what everyone everyone thinks her husband is like the perfect guy. However, he has moved away for work. And while he's done that, you know, left her and their two children kind of alone. The youngest daughter has gone from being the chattiest little kid in the world to stop talking full sentence. The only one she actually really talks to is Joel, her slightly older brother. And I mean, Joel's not around all the time and he worries about her. They're little children worrying about themselves. Then we also have Eva and Eva is Caitlin's husband's uh, sister or rather her sister-in-law I guess that's the easier way to say it so she Eva was married to this rich was he in the movies he was like super famous super rich all that kind of jazz but he's moved on he's not moved on he's passed on <laughs> wow he's passed on um, so her husband passed on. He was kind of old and she was not as old. Yeah. And while she's going through this whole, well, how am I going to live my life now? Because her life was kind of centered around them together as a couple. Um, so she's trying to figure that out at the, at the same time as he has apparently. So he had other wives previously and he's kind of written a memoir focusing on the the different wives like the times with the different wives and all like through his whole life so the different wives have 
like gotten their part of the story and the whole point is to release this whole book this whole memoir as a book but she's having like second thought she's like well do i really want to she doesn't want to read it in the first place but she does and then she kind of also gets closer to the the editor i think it was the editor possibly editor publisher one of those he has something to do with said memoir book and he kind of wanna tell her how he wants to like publish it <laughs> wow also so caitlin and eva's paths does cross so joel being like i think he's like way up north eva's somewhere in the middle and caitlin's like way down south and so for joel not joel that's the brother so for the husband to like meet his kids every now and again instead of going all the way down they kind of meet in the middle because eva lives in this like huge mansion-esque thing so there's that for a like romance book there was a lot i mean just thinking of what i've just said the book is about was a lot for my brain so yeah it was a lot but I really really liked the story in the end. It took me a while to like figure out every everyone's part in it. What once you get through I I mean it's like the halfway mark in these kinds of books. So you, once you get to the halfway mark it's sort of like it just flows and it kind of spills out. What does that even mean? I don't know. Uh it was a very good book. It was the first book I've ever read by Lucy Dillon, so I shall be seeing if I can find some other books in the future. I think this was a gift as well, so, um, yeah. Tea break. Let's move into some, like, YA, LGBTQ+, all the letters, teenage angst. So we start this story on a school trip of all places. So they go to different schools and Ash and Poppy. Ash being from more like the lower class, the troubled kids kind of school. And then Poppy being from like the posh boarding school, I guess, I think it was. Anyway, they're kind of different people as people can be. They kind of hit it off. But then, tragedy ensues and um, Ash is killed. Yeah. But not killed killed in the way that she's not there anymore. Killed in the way that she becomes a Grim Reaper. I didn't know it was that kind of book. I just thought it was a lesbian love story. <laughs> also, I just really like the colours on the cover, so, you know. Anyway, Ash becomes a grim reaper of the area. So, they have, like, set number of grim reapers in different areas. And they sort of, like, work from there. Um, and they have, like, this all over the world, I guess. We don't go very far. We're in Brighton, though, aren't we? If I remember correctly, we're in Brighton. Possibly. Somewhere along there. Anyway. So, what the other Grim Reapers tell Ash is that it's very important for her to not, like, cross paths with, like, her family and stuff. Not because they will recognise her, but more... As in, if they do recognise her, it means that they are soon to die. Sag. <laughs> but then, she sees Poppy again. Poppy being like her first love, her only love, I believe. Yeah, her first love. It says first love on the back, so we've got to go with that. So she kind of mm, stumbles upon Poppy again. I mean, she can't stop thinking about Poppy. And then they kind of meet up and of course poppy recognizes ash they kind of rekindle their love their very very early love because they ash died very early in their very newly formed relationship and then you know how do you how do you move on how do you go on from there so we know that 
Poppy's time is limited, but how limited, we don't know. And it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, the tagline says not even death will tear them apart. And this is true. Love will be love, will be love, will be love. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, it was very YA, which you can tell at parts, but the premise of it, I've not like seen another premise like it. So it was very, it was, it was an interesting concept. I did enjoy it. Thumbs up <laughs> for the very last book I have um, is The Clockwork Girl. So we are in Paris in 1750, apparently. So Madeleine, Ma Madeleine, Madeleine, one of them, she's French, so one of them. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, she's kind of grown up in a whole house. So her mum is like the madame or whatever they are called. She is like the runner of a whole house. Yeah. Right, yeah. But Madeline, she she's not really partaking of that kind of things. Um, I mean, she did until she had a little accident in which she was very, very much scarred. And now no one wants her. So she's left alone in that aspect. But she's she's kind of clever. She she knows things. She sees things because people don't pay attention to her in the same way. So she's kind of been one of them. Uh, well, she's been given information about certain guests to the police and whatnot those kind of people and then they come with the proposition for her and it is for her to, to sort of become a spy in a different household as a mm, what's it called it's called something i can't find the word so she is to look after this clockmaker's daughter uh, who's just come home from boarding school and all that so it's in those times where rich people get staff. I guess in today's times it would be like a personal assistant, but not really. While she's like looking after this daughter, who's 17 or something by the way, so she's not a small child. She's, she's almost a grown woman. So while she's doing this, she's also supposed to see what this clockmaker is doing if he's doing any illicit things that he's not supposed to be doing like some yeah yeah naughty things so he creates these like mechanical birds and rabbits and he's created bigger mechanical things as well like clocks and people yeah so her Madeline's job is basically to see that it's not doing anything naughty naughty it kind of takes on from there we have some historical figures in here we have the king louis something and uh, madame de pompadon is involved in one way shape or form it was a very interesting story it didn't go where i thought it was gonna go from like the beginning of it so in the beginning of it i felt like okay we're going in as a spy we're just gonna spy on this dude and like see what he's up to and like what kind of secrets does he have in his locked rooms and such um but then we go to the palace and was it versailles i'm gonna guess it was versailles i don't know um I d yeah versailles it's it said something about that anyway so we're getting like this historical Paris and historical France really as well as like clockwork things <laughs> I enjoyed it uh, it definitely didn't I it was not what I expected I don't even know what I expected it to be but definitely very interesting read <laughs> yes that was uh, some ramblings again about some books I read if you've read any of these books, please do let me know what you thought of them or if you like 
find them interesting enough from my ramblings to pick them up you know let me know let's have a chat in the comments so yeah thank you so much for watching i shall see you all next time until then take care oh, bye bye